My name is Jacob Wheeler and I am a Major League Fishing World Championship competitor. Fishing was a way of life from a really young age. Uh, started fishing with my dad, which you know to me was my hero um, all the way through pretty much my whole life. But he wasn't a, you know, a tournament bass angler, he just was an angler that enjoyed going out there and catching crappie and walleye and, and, and bass as well. And so, you know, starting off, I mean, I was two years old when I was out there fishing with him. And so I didn't know anything different. This was like, this is what I thought was, you know, normal. This is what my life revolved around was because I loved being out there with my dad and enjoying the time, you know, whether it was from the bank, whether it was in a paddle boat, no matter what. But when I hooked that first bass, I think I was actually three and a half. I remember, I don't know exactly how old I was, I think it was like three and a half, four. From that point on, that fish was jumping and going crazy, and that was that was something special. That was the start of what the, my journey. I remember the first boat that we actually got, and you know that was an old tie craft, 60 horsepower, and like we had to literally bring like a 44 ounce big gulp cup to bilge water out of it because the bilge pumps would halfway work half the time, and we had to bring a big bucket to fill the live well up, but. But I had so many fond memories of being in that boat. And, and there was one time I, that, was, that was really an important part of my life. You know, it was right, right around getting into high school. I was 13, 14 years old. And I, I remember being at a, a junior world or state championship. And I get on the water and we're in this boat that, that, that could technically sink at any, any moment. <laughs> and I look around and I see all these fancy bass boats out there. You know, $50,000 bass boats, best electronics, best trolling motors, best equipment. And I, and I tell my dad, and I'm like, man, dad, I just, I don't think that, you know, I don't know how we can beat these guys. You know, I don't know, these guys just have all this, this really good stuff. And, and he told me, and I'll never forget this. He said, Jacob, it's not the boat catches them, it's the fishermen. And so that day, I actually ended up going on to win the state championship out of our old boat. And like that, that just like tells you, you don't always have to have like all the things, like, you know, and fishing is something that's so cool as a, as a sport because you don't have to have everything to necessarily do it. And, and that, that day just proved it to me. Like, I'll never forget that lesson. As that went on, I jumped into the BFLs. I remember, you know, aging out at 19 years old, aging out of, of the high school program, jumping into the BFLs, and a, and a buddy of mine told me um, that, like, look, man, you really need to do this. Like, this is something that, you know, I feel like you need to try to, to, to make it to the next level. And I'm like, how can I do that? You know, I mean, didn't own a boat. I was very fortunate to have um, people around me and friends around me that had boats that I could borrow or use. And I, and I remember this is the craziest story. I remember driving or paying my first entry fee to a BFL. I'm driving to the lake, it was on Lake Patoka, and my truck breaks down. I had a borrowed boat, my truck breaks down, everything locks in. So I'm just like completely like, just, I'm like, I'm sad, obviously. I'm pretty sad at that point in time. And, and I remember like, like calling the tournament director up, telling him I wasn't gonna be able to make it. And, and they said, well, we can, we can transfer your, your money to a, another event. I said, oh, that'd be awesome, because $150 when you're 19 years old, you know, that's a lot of money. And so at that point in time, he like transferred it to an event out in Ohio. And I, I, I'm like, okay, that's perfect. You know, I can start and maybe make the regional. I'm just thinking like long-term, even though I got only enough for one tournament, I'm just thinking like, you know, it'll, it'll work itself out. So I remember going to this, like, it, was, it was actually on Grand Lake St. Mary's. In, in Ohio, which is like two hours away from my house. So at that point in time, I, I get another truck. I have a, a friend of mine that actually let me buy his truck and buy it off of like $20 a week or something with no interest, which was like crazy big blessing. Um, I was able to borrow another boat, uh, my buddy's boat, that, that halfway worked, you know, had, had like fought, you know, messed up spark plugs, troll motor batteries were okay, you know, just always something. So I get there to that tournament and I go on to win the event. I mean, and win like four thousand dollars like the first bfl that i fished you know hundred fifty dollars it was just like everything had a reason like everything worked its way into like happening and so i went on to 
to qualify for the regional. And, and there were so many instances that if one thing didn't happen, that I wouldn't be sitting here in front of you. I mean, there's so many, like, and I, I can't even get into them all, but there were so many times that I can look back and be like, if I didn't catch that one fish, I wouldn't have qualified for the regional. If I wouldn't have caught that one fish at the regional, I wouldn't have qualified for the All-American, and, and so on and so forth. And so once I qualified for the All-American at the, at the regional, I knew that was my only shot. Like, I knew that that was, that was it. That was the opportunity that I'm gonna have to become a professional angler. I still didn't have a boat at that point in time, trying to you know, save up and try to get something. Um, but I, I remember putting as much of my time and effort into pre preparing for that event. And I just had this feeling that like, it was meant to be. Like I just like, it was $100,000, first place. And if it, if it was, if I, if I won, I could be a professional bass fisherman. If I didn't, I had to go back you know, to playing to, to ground level and, and, and try to restart and figure out what's gonna happen. So I go out, I go out on that first day and I catch like 18 pounds of bass, which was a really big bag on that lake. I come in, I'm leading the tournament by seven pounds. So I'm like, at this point in time, I'm 20 years old, two more days, I'm leading the tournament by seven pounds, seven or eight pounds, and I'm like, two more days of this and my dreams come true. I go out two more days and catch another really good bag and end up winning by like eight or nine pounds, like $100,000. At 20 years old, I had $250 in my bank account. I remember the, and when I'm done, I have $100,000, you know, and, and, and I bid into be able to fish professionally. There were so many things throughout my life that I look at that I'm like, man, you know, if this didn't happen, if this didn't happen, if this didn't happen. And so many people that, that came through that, that helped me along the way. And so I think that, that um, there's always a lot of gratitude to those, 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 those people that, that spent that extra time. You know, that when I see a kid out there fishing um, or trying to get there, you always want to encourage somebody. Because I, I, there were so many people in my life that encouraged me along the way, that positive influence. Even if, if you said like, hey man, you can do it. Like that was, that was a huge deal to me because there were so many doubters. There were so many people that, that, that wanted to, you know, look at it as a cup half empty I, rather than the cup half full. And, and those, those people that, that really pushed you up and wanted to see you succeed, I feel like that positive influence, you know, just made it so much easier. So now we're here sitting at the General Tire World Championship. You know, in, in, in the, all of the things that had to happen to get to this point, even the last five years, starting in the selects and moving up and fishing the cups and having two great years back to back to ultimately win, you know, points and come in, you know, to this event with, you know, in my mind, 12 amongst for sure, the 12, some of the best anglers in the entire world. Now to have a shot at taking that title home, you know, we're here. This is it. This is something you work towards. This is a lifelong journey to get to this point. And now we have an opportunity to win.